If your weather is anything like it has been here in San Francisco, calling it inconsistent would be a massive understatement. While there is probably nothing a microcontroller can do to fix the weather, we can use it to know exactly what our environment is like. So today we're going to use a Bosch BME280 sensor with our MicroPython powered ESP8266 to track the temperature, humidity, and air pressure. Before I jump in this week, a quick note. While I do include all of the critical links in the video description, I also want to draw your attention to the Obviate.io blog linked at the top of the description. Each video I include a link to a blog entry which covers the video in detail. So there you'll find more links, instructions, and full commands I type. The details I can't fit on YouTube. The BME280 comes from a long line of environmental sensors made by Bosch, each with increasingly better quality. The sensor is I2C enabled and has very low power draw, making it great for off-grid applications. Most importantly, the BME280 has a temperature accuracy of plus or minus 1 degree Celsius, 3% humidity, and 1 hectopascal of pressure. With proper calibration, you could even use this sensor as an altimeter. I procured my sensor from AliExpress for about $3, though they are available on most electronic retailers' websites. So why the BME280 as compared to the DHT11 or the AM2302, or any number of other sensors? My choice is based on accuracy, cost, availability, and ease of use. The BME ranks well on all of these factors, making it a great general purpose environmental sensor. This compares to something like the DHT11, which is less accurate and doesn't even reliably support the full 0 to 100% humidity range. In the linked Obviate blog entry, I've included a detailed comparison I located of eight similar sensors. So with the background out of the way, let's get on to the prerequisites. You'll need to check out two Git repositories. The first is a BME280 library for MicroPython, and the second is my MicroPython samples, the same repository as we got in the last video. Links in the description. We're also going to be signing up for an account on io.adafruit.com. They provide a nice web-based MQTT interface for a small amount of data for free. If you've never heard of MQTT before, it stands for Message Queuing Telemetry Transport. At the core, it's a very lightweight protocol for publishing and subscribing to messages. Since it's so lightweight, it works great for IoT devices. Now after signing up, we're going to click View AIO Key and Keep Said Key Somewhere Safe. Don't worry, you can't use mine. Then we're going to go to the feeds, delete the default entry, and create three feeds named Humid, Press, and Temp. I'm assuming by this point you've watched the other videos on how to flash MicroPython and get files onto the controller with Ampy. With the tooling basics covered, we can dive right into the wiring. The fritzing diagram you see on screen uses a SparkFun BME280, but the design is the same as the wiring shown on the ESP8266 on the right. Make sure your Wemos D1 is unplugged from power before you wire it up. Otherwise, the connections are as follows. From the BME280, the VIN goes to 3.3 volts on the controller, ground to ground, SCL to D1, and finally, SDA to D2. With that, the wiring is done. So we're going to plug in the Wemos D1 into our computer and double check what port it's on, as usual. Next, I'm going to Ampy Run I2C Scanner, which is a short script that prints out what I2C addresses it detects devices on. If the wiring was successful, you should see an output similar to what's on screen. Now, some of the BME280s use an address of 0x76, which is what I've got and what my code assumes. However, some BME280s, such as those sold by Adafruit, operate on address 0x77. This is fine, it just means you'll need to make a small change to the sample code. Before we load any application code, we need to load the sensor library. So change the directory to that of the BME280 library we checked out earlier, and Ampy put BME280.py to BME280.py. Whereas with traditional Python you'd use pip install or easy install to get a library, in MicroPython we manually load the library file on the controller like any other code. Now back to our sample code directory. Quickly looking at this code, it should hopefully be fairly clear that all it does is print the sensor values and wait one second. An important note for those of you who ran the I2C scanner and got back a value other than 0x76. In the code where you see the line that says address equals 0x76, you want to update that to your value. 
probably 0x77. We're going to ampi put bme 280 printpy to main.py. After that, we'll connect to the ASP8266 with screen to see the output. If everything is running as expected, you should be seeing the environmental data output once per second. Temperature, pressure, and then humidity. If the controller is left alone, the number should stay fairly consistent, but we can make it more exciting. First, I'll touch the BME280, and the temperature will slowly rise. As I let go, the numbers will settle back to ambient air again. Lastly, I've got a can of spray freeze, which, with a very short burst, will demonstrate that the BME280 is responsive and goes well into the negatives. Printing out the sensor data is great, but being tethered to a computer is of limited use, especially since we're using a Wi-Fi-enabled microcontroller. So let's go put those features to use. First, we are going to ampi put Wi-Fi client-boot to boot.py. This new boot script is the same as the default with an added function to connect to Wi-Fi. By default, the function won't do anything, but as you'll see in bme280-mqtt.py, that function is called on line 10. You'll want to change the SSID and password to your Wi-Fi information. Additionally, on line 9, you'll want to update the username and API key sections with the io.adafruit.com information from the prerequisite step. The rest of the code connects to the Wi-Fi, sets up an MQTT connection to Adafruit, and prints locally and publishes the environmental data via MQTT, then disconnects and waits for 10 seconds. Now I have already updated the values for my setup, so now all that is required is ampi put bme280-mqtt.py to main.py. I'm going to screen into the Wemos one more time. This will verify the controller was able to get on the Wi-Fi and is running the code as expected. Then we can switch over to io.adafruit.com in a browser and watch the data roll in. I've plugged the ESP8266 into a battery pack and moved it around a bit so we could see some data slightly more interesting than a flat line. The first location is my freezer, which after about 10 minutes was registering below negative 15 degrees Celsius. The BME280 hardware supports as low as negative 40 C, but a battery in the freezer isn't a great idea for more than this quick test. After that, I took the sensor outside to record some of San Francisco's clear but cool weather. The humidity spike was condensation on the sensor after coming out of the freezer, but it mostly normalized within about 10 minutes. There you have it, a Wemos D1 Mini running MicroPython with a BME280 collecting environmental data and beaming it up to the cloud via Wi-Fi and MQTT. Some things to think about going forward would be the use of deep sleep, how frequently we actually need data, and how to make the setup a bit more packaged. I'm looking at all of that and more to cover in the next video. Once again, I wanted to thank everyone for the likes, subscribes, and comments. I'm glad these tutorials have been as useful to you as they have been for me to make. I've got some other projects in the works, including a home automation hub that has Zigbee and Z-Wave support, which will be coming down the pipeline soon. Until then, hack a great day.